Let's talk about authoritarianism. There is no doubt that Donald Trump is assembling a cabinet meant to push out authoritarianism and control. Trump's cabinet as designed is not for governance. It's for authoritarianism and control. Trump's picks aren't merely unqualified. They are ideologues handpicked for their willingness to dismantle democratic safeguards. And the themes here are all authoritarian, undermining impartial institutions, militarizing civilian spaces, centralizing executive power, dehumanizing the dissenters, eroding into nothing the checks and balances. It is not just a dangerous group of people that Trump is nominating. They are the infrastructure of a Trump led authoritarian takeover. If you look at their backgrounds and their statements, they aren't of governance. They are of loyalty to Trump's vision of absolute power. Cash Patel for FBI director. We're going to talk more about Cash Patel a little bit later on in the show. Patel's career is brown nosing loyalty to Trump. It's not impartiality. It's not what we need in an FBI director. And Cash was instrumental in attempts to discredit the Russia investigation. He drafted memos that falsely claimed the FBI had it in for Trump. He's openly called the FBI's leadership corrupt. This aligns with the deep state conspiracies of Trump and the people around him. And if you make Cash Patel the FBI director, you are signaling signaling bye bye to the independence of the FBI. Expect an FBI under Patel to prioritize political loyalty above everything else. Objective law enforcement, not under Cash Patel. The investigations are going to shift from looking at actual threats to perceived enemies of Trump's agenda. We know it. They might even go after Biden's family. Disastrous authoritarianism. Pete Hegseth as secretary of defense. Of course, Hegseth has no experience managing military operations or strategy, but he's made headlines because he just adores authoritarian leaders. He's praised Viktor Orban's Hungary because it has strong borders and rejects liberal democratic values. When he was a Fox host, Hegseth downplayed the importance of civilian control over the military, which for democratic governance governance in the United States, civilian control over the military is a major check and balance. And if he does become secretary of defense, you could see the Pentagon go from what it is today, which is a certainly flawed but not overtly partisan institution into a partisan stronghold which will undermine what we would hope to see from the military, which is neutrality and professionalism. Not good. Stephen Miller, Trump's deputy policy guy, Stephen Miller's horrifying track record includes being the architect of the family separation policy, pushing that Muslim ban, dismantling refugee programs, and more recently putting together the infrastructure of the forthcoming militarized mass deportation plan. He has all sorts of ideas as to how Trump can do things while bypassing Congress. That is a complete affront to the balance of power. And remember that the infamous emails that were leaked about five years ago revealed that he is obsessed with white nationalist literature and policies. You give Miller control in shaping policy. It is going to be dark, dark, dark. We've already talked about Tom Homan as Trump's deportations are. He has said sanctuary cities are un-American. He has said they will force their way in with red state armies to blue cities and blue states that want nothing to do with militarized mass deportation. His appointment means the era of militarized immigration policy will begin. Humanitarian concerns, human rights will rank very, very low. You've also got Elon Musk, who's going to run Doge, the Department of Government Efficiency or Grifty Edge Lords or Gag Worthy. Okay, anyway, um, Elon's uh, track record in business is gutting internal oversight teams. We've seen with X how he just says, oh, reinstate the band accounts, no process. He doesn't like guardrails. He doesn't like. Uh, uh, regulation and accountability. It's a major red flag. He's attacked the SEC. 
He's attacked OSHA. So we could see a dramatic authoritarian undoing of regular regulatory infrastructure in the United States. And I could go on and on, but I won't. If you zoom out, the cabinet and other selections of Trump are about a couple of things, centralized power, erode democratic norms and give the middle finger to the way that things have been done historically with regard to following the law, due process, et cetera. These are not the people you hire if you want governance. These are the people you hire if you want to reshape government into a tool to be Trump's own personal agenda. And if these people take the reins, it's more than just democracy at risk. It is accountability and it is fairness and it is the government as we know it. Did you know there is only one VPN fully optimized for streaming 4K video and downloading large files? That's our sponsor, Private Internet Access. A VPN hides your IP address, allows you to make it look like your device is anywhere in the world. So this lets you stream content on Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max, not normally available in your home country. For instance, the show Friends is not available on Netflix in the US. But when I change my IP address to the UK, I can watch friends on Netflix and a ton of other awesome content I would otherwise miss out on without lag and without buffering. Private Internet access is also faster than other VPNs for file sharing, so you can download anonymously, but without the long wait times. Anyone can use private Internet access. Just turn it on once and forget about it. No special knowledge required. And you can use it on all of your devices, TV, phone, tablet, computer. Private Internet access is giving my audience 83 percent off, which comes out to just 203 a month plus four extra months for free. Go to PIAVPN.com slash Pacman. The link is down below.